Good morning and welcome to the July MPRC for your 23 Interim Results Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab situated on the right-hand corner of the screen. And the company would like to thank all investors for their pre-submitted questions and will strive to answer all of these during today's meeting. If you have any further questions, simply click on that Q&A button, type in your question and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question received during the meeting itself. However, the company review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand you over to John Wood, CEO. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, pleased to be able to uh, give you this presentation today. Uh, this will be our half-year presentation, but uh, it's also fairly close to my 100-day mark as uh, CEO, so be a little bit of a, a state of the nation. And then uh, for those of you who would like to uh, stay on, uh, we have a treat for you today. Uh, our founder, uh, Thomas Nushmeyer, uh, will be uh, doing a special presentation uh, going into extra depth uh, on our lithium sulfur issues as well. So uh, I first would like to introduce our, our presentation team today. I'm your CEO, uh, John Wood. I have a, uh, a long history as a CEO uh, in high growth uh, innovation companies and particularly in the energy storage industry. It's a real honor to be uh, stewarding uh, July and for you, uh, and a real privilege to be leading the remarkable team that I have. I'd like to pass to uh, our founder, Thomas Mushfire, to give a little background. Yeah, so uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, opportunity again to, I guess, uh, talk to you know, our investors, which are really the lifeblood of the company. Your support is uh, extremely important to us, and uh, we're very happy to be able to share some of our exciting news today. I'm um, very pleased to be sitting here with John, who's doing an outstanding job in his first 100 days, has really started to, to make a very positive and strong impact. And then uh, joining me is Amit Gupta, our CFO, who's been supporting uh, those activities, uh, Sterling. Sterling. Thank you, Thomas. So uh, my name is Amit Gupta. I'm the CFO, almost 18, 19 months with the business. And uh, as previously, uh, we have achieved a lot in the last 18, 19 months, but we'll go through what's been the kind of the key drivers in the last six months to 31st of December, and then post the period and highlights as well. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so a little summary first. Uh, this has been a, a, a very, very important uh, period for uh, July. Uh, I think that uh, we've, we've hit a very uh, important transition point. And I'd like to explain that to you today. Uh, Chilean, I believe, is maturing from being a company that had some great technology and a great team uh, to a, a new positioning in the world stage. Uh, we'll talk today about the acquisition of the Johnson Nappy IP that we made that complements our existing technology and our, our, the work of our existing team. But I believe that Chilean is now positioning uh, to become a very important player uh, in the uh, energy storage ecosystem. Uh, and I, I believe we're at that point of inflection where that uh, importance and progress will start to be progressively recognized in the broader community. So in the period, we manufactured uh, 1,200 zinc bromide cells uh, for our own testing and for the uh, Asiona uh, project. Uh, it's since I've commenced, we did a very deep dive on the matched market for zinc bromide, and I'll be talking about uh, some of the outcomes uh, from that work uh, in the course of this presentation. Our team uh, made strong progress uh, with our lithium uh, sulfur uh, activities, and uh, we shared with you uh, a little while ago some of our uh, progress with that uh, in terms of uh, our cycle testing. Very recently, we announced to you uh, two IP transactions. Those IP transactions were driven by the progress that our team had been making uh, on their own merit uh, in the lithium sulfur space. So the two transactions, the first one uh, was the acquisition of the IP portfolio, uh, which came from Johnson Matthew. Now, this is a very significant IP portfolio, 85 patent families, 450 patents, a uh, very important part uh, of the uh, global IP landscape for uh, lithium sulfur technology. Uh, and lithium sulfur, uh, very important new technology, We'll, uh, we'll talk about it in detail later, and our founder will present uh, a deep dive, but 
even if you ask ChatGPT what will be the next uh, great uh, step in energy storage, by it will, it will let you know that we're on the right track with lithium, lithium sulfur. Gelion uh, was selected by New Energy Nexus, an energy lab, uh, supercharged innovation program, uh, which is great recognition, the people behind that energy lab, uh, and particularly New Energy, New energy Nexus uh, ran the uh, lithium bridge program in the, in the US, which led to the large investment in lithium uh, industry acceleration in the US. And the idea with uh, the supercharged program in Australia, where your uh, company does its, its primary research, uh, was to uh, turbocharge the Australian uh, lithium community. And while we're making all of this progress, cash remains strong, and our CFO will uh, present on cash uh, as we progress this presentation. So looking at our business, when I presented uh, last, we talked about uh, the fact that Geline has two core technologies. Uh, one, the zinc bromide technology, which we are positioning at the lead acid ecosystem, and the other, the lithium ion sulfur uh, technology, which we see as the next uh, stage of, of uh, lithium industry. Collectively, between the lead acid industry and the lithium ion industry, that is the bulk of the uh, chemical energy storage industry today. They're both today roughly the same size. The lithium industry is a little bigger, but the lithium industry is pro uh, projected to be three times the size of the lead acid industry uh, by 2030. Starting with our uh, zinc bromide uh, technology, and you can see here a uh, picture of some of our cells on the left and on the right you can see uh, some of our battery management systems that control the cells. We've made very solid progress, and uh, there's a lot of detail in the pictures that you've got on the screen here, but we wanted to share these with you so you can understand the scope of the work uh, that your team is, is doing. So firstly, uh, it is a new chemistry. So we are implementing uh, zinc bromide in a, uh, a flat plate format, uh, similar to lead acid. Uh, and so we are managing every part of, of, of the launch of that technology. So that means the chemistry, development of the chemistry for the cells. It means development uh, of the BMS uh, to manage the cells. Uh, it means the integration with the system. Uh, and we put that all together uh, to create an overall customer experience. And you're seeing the elements of our progress uh, on this screen now. And so first, we started with a single string, uh, two kilowatt hour system. Then we moved up to the 12.6 uh, kilowatt hour system. And now we're uh, extending uh, that to the full scale uh, system uh, at the moment. These are the pictures you're, you're seeing uh, from your team. So uh, battery testing, uh, we are learning uh, about our technology. There is a little bit of difference in the flavor and the approach uh, that I've introduced uh, to uh, Jalein. So we had a, a program uh, that was based on launching and launching uh, the zinc bromide technology with its current capabilities and then uh, promoting that into uh, commercialization. We also had uh, a series of R&D that we were going to do to add uh, new features uh, to uh, those cells as well to make the, uh, the cells, the, the proposition of the cells more compelling and to lower the cost of manufacture of the cells. So inherent in today's presentation, you will see what you could consider a pivot or a slight changing in approach. So the R&D that we will be doing uh, on the zinc bromide uh, cells was always intended as part of our program. But rather than pushing forward uh, with the cell in its current state, which would have us, if you like, buy some market uh, with some lost leader uh, before we actually got to where we had com completed all elements of the compelling proposition of our technology and the cost reduction of our technology. Uh, we will be pushing forward with the research to, uh, to attain that compelling match to market before we, uh, we progress uh, to the commercialization. Now, that's an important uh, decision and an important uh, slightly important change in, in approach. Why are we doing this? Well, uh, we've got a, a very strong technology that we're taking into uh, a competitive market segment. 
we've talked in the past that this technology uh, has a, a lot of very good features about it. It's a safe, te safe technology. It, uh, uh, it has uh, the capability to do a lot of cycles. It can handle uh, temperature. Uh, there's a whole bunch of advantages uh, to our technology, but equally as well, it has characteristics that we have to recognize, like, for example, uh, if we charge the technology fast, it can develop uh, dead rights. And so, and also we have management uh, methods that we use with the technology, like uh, discharging the technology completely to strip uh, those dead rights. So, uh, rather than try to launch the technology into market segments that suit uh, the sort of management behavior that we do, We've decided to do the research to, to control those artifacts better so that we can uh, make the, make the technolo take the technology comp out with confidence and conviction into the, in the segments that it is most compelling. Now, one of those uh, is that uh, we've recognized that our technology is very good in fast discharge mode, and I'll talk about that in the economics uh, in just a moment. Uh, but as this technology is targeted at zinc, at uh, the lead acid world, those who understand the lead acid chemistry know that as you discharge faster, you actually get less uh, energy out because the plates passivate. Whereas with the July technology, we don't have that, that effect. So uh, what we've found is uh, new and substantial market opportunities that uh, we want to work towards. So dendrite management, lower cost electrode materials, and then based on confirmation uh, through our testing program to adjust our uh, initial market fo focus towards those market segments that we've found most compelling. And this diagram now on the left-hand side of your screen is very important. So when you look down the bottom of the screen, when we, we talked originally about zinc bromide, we considered that the technology would be uh, most compelling as a long-term duration energy storage method. In fact, from our matched market work, and, and I've done a lot of work in the lead acid world before, but what we find is that as the rate becomes higher, uh, we become progressively more compelling. And that's the orange line uh, on the screen and the white line. So here what we're looking at is upfront cost uh, for the cells in terms of dollars per kilowatt hour at pack level. And you can see that uh, as the discharge becomes faster, progressively we become very compelling in our cost, uh, cost comparison. So this is a market segment uh, and a market insight that we uh, intend to be moving towards. So what can you expect in the next, uh, in the outlook for our zinc bromide? First of all, we'll be accelerating the R&D uh, and focusing our attention on the R&D to address those performance enhancements that we've identified from our match to market and to be doing the uh, testing to prepare ourselves so that when we start to lean into uh, the commercialization, we know that we're doing that with a proper match to market and a compelling proposition. This is a mistake that a lot of companies make. We don't want to make this with Giant. We respect uh, and treasure the support of our, our shareholders. We want to utilize the resources you've entrusted us in the, in the very best way, uh, and this is the way that we see that we should be doing that. We'll be doing in-house and field, field uh, battery managed test programs, and when we'll be preparing for uh, external testing and certification. Now to turn to our work in lithium sulfur, and, and in here we say lithium silicon sulfur. In fact, uh, with the Johnson Math, NAFI uh, IP acquisition, Complementing what we're doing ourselves, we are targeting three uh, anode, three, so three different anode compositions with our, our lithium sulfur work. So first those will be uh, a uh, lithium uh, sulfur with a graphitic uh, anode. The second will be a lithium uh, sulfur with a graphitic and silicon, added silicon, high silicon anode. And the third will be lithium metal. Um, but uh, what your company has done is to achieve is to uh, make the strategic acquisition of what we understand to be the world's leading uh, lithium sulfur IP portfolio. It's a very important move for July. 
this stage, I'm going to pause and I'm going to make a, a one point uh, that I think is important to understand. You've heard me say that we've uh, taken a deliberate decision to continue and focus uh, our zinc bromide towards the R&D to make it a compelling proposition. And you've also heard that we've made this strategic acquisition of the uh, Johnson Matthey IP to complement our own lithium sulfur uh, IP to put Jolion into a very important position in the world energy storage marketplace. Well, the good news is that by doing those two things in our plan at the same time, we're able to still run to the same, largely the same cash profile that we had in our original plan. It just means that we're not going to be trying to spend money to, to buy into the market or to, or to force our way into the market. We'll instead do the research so that we can uh, approach the market with a compelling proposition and it's allowed us to secure this very important uh, IP portfolio for July, positioning July uh, as a globally important participant in uh, the energy storage industry. So let's talk about... Uh, and if I could just add something to that. So it's basically a continuation of what we said we were going to do. The only difference is that we are not going to try to get market share by loss lead uh, kind of activities, but we're just going, uh, going with, the, uh, with the program that we have outlined in terms of cost production and the money that we are saving not going out uh, to, to gain market share early for the loss leader. Uh, that money has been able to be uh, has, has been spent now with the, in, in this strategic acquisition. While it's not externally recognised yet, the decisions that your board has taken has we believe positioned uh, Chilean uh, very very strongly. We're very uh, enthusiastic about where we are uh, now. So okay, Chilean is at the global forefront now uh, of advanced lithium sulphur. Uh, cathode and lithium sulfur battery technology. It's a world leading portfolio and it's in the most important part of development of the, of the whole energy storage industry. We shared with you uh, some of our results. Results are, are continuing. Uh, I won't preempt anything, but I can tell you that the test results uh, remain uh, very uh, compelling uh, that we're seeing coming from our work. In fact, those results were so compelling uh, that that was the, that was the trigger uh, for us to decide to lean into our lithium sulfur work and to do the Johnson Matthey uh, IP. So the Johnson Matthey IP. I'll get to the Johnson Matthey IP in a couple of slides time. But uh, why? Well, first of all, lithium sulfur sulfur can store more energy. In fact it gives us the potential to store in a lithium cell up to twice the gravimetric energy density. Gravimetric energy density, that's really important. Gravimetric energy density means that, for example, things that fly can fly much further because you've got more energy uh, for weight. It can also uh, contribute in many ways to uh, all aspects of, of mobility. So gravimetric energy density is a really, really important thing can also deliver really com com compelling cost savings to uh, lithium energy storage. It's safer. Uh, Thomas will talk later about and explain to you uh, the, the reason that it's safer, but it introduces aspects of, of safety to uh, lithium batteries. And of course, there's abundant sulfur around the world. It's one of the, the most abundant materials, and it's a very important consideration when we, when we know battery chemistry is that we uh, don't need a lot of the problematical uh, materials by going this lithium sulfur path. So what have we done? Well, our team had indicated from the test, we had the indication for our test results that our team were working towards fundamental breakthroughs in a couple of key aspects of the technology. Again, Thomas will talk about that in detail. And that's that sort of center, center uh, part of the jigsaw puzzle there. So we knew we were on track. The Johnson Maffey IP surrounds it, it's like a moat. So it does two things for us. It's two things this acquisition does for your company or our company. Uh, 
it one allows our gives our technical team a resource that they can use to accelerate and secondly it provides a protective moat of ip around uh, everything that we're doing the second ip acquisition you saw was the ip that had been developed by the july team in partnership with sydney university at sydney university now because we were doing that under a, a, an agreement, with, we had an exclusive license to that technology, but it was important at this point in time to convert it to ownership so that we could take this whole uh, IP portfolio forward for you. Why do the supercharge? I touched on that uh, a little earlier for you, uh, but you can see the quote from Danny, Danny Kennedy here, uh, who's the Chief Exec Executive Officer of New Energy Nexus, the company behind. Uh, supercharge. New Energy Nexus established the US uh, lithium uh, bridge, targeting 33 billion in lithium battery revenues and 100,000 new jobs in the US. And then these people, the same people, came to Australia and said, you know what? 50% of the world's lithium is actually mined uh, in Australia. And there's got to be a whole lot more we can be doing to the supply chain and the ecosystem in Australia. And that's what Julian is doing. We do our research in Australia, and the Australian government has uh, very solid plans around accelerating our ecosystem that we will be seeking to, uh, to take this advantage of. I'll pass to uh, Amit for the financial results. Thank you, John. Um, I think no surprises on the results. Uh, the results for the six months of December are in line with expectations and what we had expected at the time of IPO. I think we need to give some consideration of how the market has changed, inflation, cost of doing business has gone uh, significantly higher than what, ex what everyone expected in 2021. So I think we are, we are very proud of what we have achieved um, in the six months of December. Uh, EBITDA loss is in line with what we expected. Our cash balance is very, very healthy, 14.4 million pounds at 31st of December. Obviously, we have made this acquisition and the plan is to sell a portion of the IP, uh, which is not core to us, to a third party. That discussion is happening. Should that be successful, the net impact on the cash flow would be around £3 million. So we'll still have a lot of cash left on the balance sheet to kind of pursue and continue with our commercial and technological developments. I, um, we'll get to the questions that have been asked and I'll address the question on cash burn later. This slide again, no debt, uh, well well capitalized balance sheet. I think we continue to have a good control on cost. Um, there's a lot of thinking that goes by the board, by the execs to make sure we're taking the right decision for the business and taking care of the cash that we invested in the business as well. On the cash flow, I think what I wanted to flag here is the cash flow investing activities looks like a high negative number. Uh, it's only 0 0.4 million because there, is, there was around 5 million pounds invested in short-term deposits. Um, but that, that's pretty much from the financial side. I'll pass it back to you, John, for the summary. Thank you. All right. Um, I've got a script here a little. Um, so where we're positioned the company now is in a very, very strong position. Uh, we have a brilliant team at, at July. It's a, a real treasure uh, to be CEO of this group, to be able to work with Thomas uh, and to be able to work with the wonderful team uh, that we have in, in July. We have some great scientists, some great engineers, and just great people doing all of the work around them uh, in, in July. They truly are uh, absolutely world-class. The Johnson Matthew IP, just can't be overstated for how important this was to complement and supplement what we were already doing as July. And it put us in a position, how do I best describe this? I have to use a technical term, which is argy bargy, uh, to argy bargy into uh, and against the best uh, around the world and to establish July uh, as a leader uh, in energy storage and as a, as a, 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 a real uh, force. Now, what can you expect to see uh, from us from here? So I'm off script a little bit. Most of the board meetings I had uh, from when I started uh, with July, we're looking at the technology, looking at the match to market, the positioning of the technology, 
looking at what we wanted to do in terms of systems to be world's best development uh, practice in July, looking at our resource pool, and looking at how to achieve our goals. Where we're focusing now is on commercial outreach uh, and, and towards partnerships to now that we've, we've got the technology, we've got the team, we've got the IP, now what we want to do is to forge towards relationships uh, around the world uh, to position that as we start to scale and progress our technology through the different technical readiness uh, stages. Now, as shareholders, uh, I hope that's going to be good news for you because I think we've significantly changed, uh, enhanced the value of your of your asset, although it's not yet uh, reflected uh, in uh, perception. And I think that the first way that that will start to happen is by external recognition of just where uh, July has got itself into uh, the industry strip, uh, strategically. So I'm looking for progress going forward in terms of external recognition of what July is doing. And I think that's going to reflect, or that we, we plan that that's going to reflect for you as shareholders in perception of the value of, of the company that uh, we're operating uh, for you. So 2023, you'll see uh, progress in our technology readiness, our uh, development pathway for both technologies. You'll see uh, us leveraging our novel uh, zinc bromide technology, uh, focusing the development and targeting it towards these areas where we believe that it can become uh, most compelling. You'll see the, the work that we're doing uh, on our lithium sulfur technologies, particularly in the two key areas that Thomas will talk about, obviously soft load shuttling and electrolyte capability. You'll see progression on that. You'll see that progression reflected commercially in recognition by external parties, market, market partners as well. In 2024, you'll see us start to take that zinc bromide technology out for third party validation testing uh, and certification. You'll see the lithium sulfur start to progress on match to market with, with industry partners. Uh, you'll see uh, testing and validation. And hopefully we won't be waiting for 2024. You'll see progressively as, you, as we do this, uh, July and reaching out to make the best of the government funding to scale up that is opening up around the world today. So certainly in Australia, we'll be working on the Australian issues, but July now being in a, a position with strong uh, global uh, compelling technology, we'll be reaching out to make use of, of, of government sourcing around the world today as well. Right, so uh, I'll take it. I think you, know, you still go. Yeah, I introduced the, 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 the transition you told us. All right, so July uh, with our team uh, have worked on our, our purpose mission. And the July team uh, re recognizes that July has a very important role to play in the climate fight and in sustainability. And so the July team uh, has adopted Global Energy Freedom as our purpose. Uh, of course, our, our purpose is to make money for our shareholders uh, and to generate return for our shareholders. But as our impact purpose, our purpose is global energy freedom. And in that, we see that our work in July uh, can benefit the planet uh, in several ways. Uh, global energy freedom to us means freedom from geopolitical control uh, of energy sources. It means freedom from the entrenched uh, uh, poverty that comes from uh, lack of access uh, to energy. And entails freedom from energy having to do damage to the planet. So they're our impact objectives. Our mission to deliver that purpose is to deliver two times the gravimetric energy density, higher safety and lower cost lithium batteries, four to five years earlier than uh, alternate pathways. Also, we'll be contributing to the mission with our zinc bromide technology, We've highlighted the mission here towards the lithium sulfur because that is going to be a huge impact and contribution uh, in the most important space. We believe this to be a significant geopolitical, economic, competitiveness and strategic importance. What does that mean? It means the stuff that we're doing in making batteries that can take 
go further with less, with higher gravimetric energy density, lower cost and safety, and makes all the things that they're used in more competitive. So we're aiming to get your line to a position where if you make a car using our batteries, it's more competitive than someone else's car. And that's our outreach uh, from an industry and, uh, and government perspective. We believe that if we execute this well, and there's always risk uh, in every as in every sort of high technology and innovation game, but we believe if we execute well, we're lucky to get a few things going in our favour, we can cut three to four years out of the industry's uh, time frame to achieve the sort of goals that we have. And that'll make a huge impact uh, towards climate targets. We want to manufacture gigawatt hours of, of, of batteries uh, in Australia, and we want to hit uh, the global supply chain and have a maximum impact in the global supply chain. Uh, and we want to add uh, value, uh, maximum value in, in what they're doing. We've got the right team to do it. We have a great team to do this. And this has been the most exciting thing for me personally. The reason that I joined July was to be able to work with Thomas. Uh, Thomas has already uh, been successful with a number of technologies that he has developed that I use globally today. So that's a, match, a matchless actual achievement. Here is one more technology and the opportunity to steward that technology from a commercial standpoint uh, is a real honor. But when you look at the picture on the right as well, there are some incredible people uh, inside July. So we have the right team. And now the pass to uh, Thomas. Right. Okay. So thanks uh, Thanks so much to be able to give a little bit of a more of a technology deep dive. It won't be too deep, but, uh, but just before I go on to the lithium sulfur, I just wanted to highlight that uh, the fact that we've established now with zinc bromide, uh, the zinc bromide technology, that we can do a fast discharge. Um, uh, uh, that, that that is really a very very compelling advantage over lead acid batteries in a range of applications, especially uninterrupted power supplies, etc. So uh, that gives um, that gives this, this match to market work that was uh, led by John with his deep experience in the lead acid battery. Uh, really showed us that that is where the the, the juicy morsels are, and uh, so we are we are we are, we are very much focusing on executing on that. Uh, on that opportunity now. So, uh, well, we talked a lot about uh, lithium sulfur being a, a, a better proposition in terms of uh, gravimetric energy density and anything that is uh, where that is uh, an issue, so especially mobility, um, that is, uh, of course, a major advantage. Um, ships will grow, will, 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 you know, electric ships will um, sail or uh, go, go for longer, drones will fly longer submarines will stay underwater for longer, etc. But also, of course, EV uh, vehicles, electric vehicles will, will, uh, will uh, go for a lot further and range anxiety will be a thing of the past with our batteries as we move forward. Um, so what are the two problems in lithium sulfur uh, battery technology? They are basically a good thing and a bad thing in the same in the same in the same statement. So, if I have sulfur on the one side and lithium on the other side, the sulfur can slowly migrate towards the lithium side and effectively corrode it. It makes a crust, uh, and that deactivates the battery. And depending on how one has built that battery and formulated the insides, that can happen rapidly after just a few cycles, or maybe fifty cycles or hundred cycles. Uh, and uh, and that, that that is a big problem that needs to be overcome. The key IP that has been developed by Juline was or is a set of uh, technologies, technology approaches, platforms uh, to handle this particular problem of polysulfide shuttling. However, there's also a benefit to this problem, and the benefit is the safety. Because if I have a mechanical deformation of my battery, an accident, if I have some other a physical uh, uh, event happening to the battery from the outside, if there was a thermal event, a fire or whatever, the battery will actually self-deactivate in this process because the sulfur will just go across to the lithium side, form this crust, and the thing will, uh, will, will be rendered very safe. So that is the dual-edged uh, dual sword. Uh, on the one hand, we uh, need to 
can handle the polysulfide shuttling, uh, but at the same time that we have this problem makes the battery very safe. Our IP handles the polysulfide shuttling, so we have the best of both worlds. The second problem uh, is that needs to be overcome, and is overcome uh, largely with the acquisition of the uh, JM uh, IP, is the electrolyte compatibility. So we uh, have on the one hand a sulfur cathode, and on the other hand a lithium anode, and the electrolyte, so the liquid in which the ions move backwards and forwards to mirror the movement of electrons on the outside of the battery, so an ion current inside the battery, electric current outside the battery. And uh, this liquid um, tends to really destroy the graphite side, the lithium ion side, if it's compatible with sulfur, and it will destroy the sulfur side if it's compatible with the lithium uh, anode. So we uh, have now access and already has started to formulate some of our own solutions within July of electrolyte formulations which overcome this problem and actually make this dream uh, become a reality. So this is uh, a graphical uh, representation of, uh, of, of the first issue, the polysulfide shuttling. So if you have a look at the right-hand bottom uh, graphic, it's, it's basically dissolving bits of sulfur moving. Now my computer has just died. Uh, that's not good. I've got to go across. So that was a small tech problem, but we are, we are good. Um, am I still... Oh, yeah. Camera? Yeah, 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 because I've stopped. Uh, so on the bottom right hand corner there um, is, a, uh, is, 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 the, uh, is a graphic where we see sulfur being dissolved and not managed well and going towards the top, which has the lithium anode uh, and, and therefore will form this crust. Uh, on the right hand uh, side, we see our technology represented by a box, and this box basically traps the uh, lithium uh, traps the sulfur as it is dissolving into the battery and you can conceptualize it like a ball made out of velcro and that velcro attaches uh, uh, the, the sulfur attaches to this velcro uh, uh, reversibly so on discharging and charging it comes on on and off uh, these these velcro balls think of them like policemen catching robbers uh, whatever whatever uh, works for you so that technology is very successful and has extended the lifetime compared to uh, what's out there uh, with other technologies uh, very significantly. And uh, we are moving and uh, we're moving forward to, uh, to, to really getting that to a, uh, to a very commercially uh, attractive proposition. Um, next slide, please. And here is uh, some now uh, a little bit older data. Uh, that shows that we can do around 300 cycles uh, to, to that 20% uh, capacity degradation. And we currently have uh, tests, which we will be announcing uh, in, the, in, in, in the next, um, in the near future. Uh, so I don't want to preempt anything in terms of news flow, uh, but they look extremely good. Uh, so we're very confident about some positive announcements around this technology. Next slide. And, um, so this, uh, this, this graphic just illustrates again what I was saying about the electrolyte, about the compatibility uh, of electrolytes. First, uh, that we have the lithium on the one side and the sulfur on the other, that we need to have an electrolyte that speaks to both and can accommodate both. And, uh, and we are very confident uh, of being able to do that. We've done it already internally and with the Johnson Mackey IP. We have a whole deep mode of electrolytes, if you excuse the pun, uh, that allows us uh, that allows us to 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 address this problem very well. Uh, next slide. And so, what uh, does it allow us to do? It allows us to really increase the energy density. And um, yeah, depending on how you calculate and depending on how you uh, uh, assemble this, it can go up to two times uh, current uh, gravimetric energy density. So uh, double the energy for the same weight. But here it comes uh, a little bit um, finessing because we are platform technology with our polysulfide shuttling uh, to, uh, approach. And that is we can interact with three different types of uh, lithium anodes. There's one which is in your iPhone right now, 
which is a lithium graphite anode. And we've got some fantastic results, which we will be publishing soon. Uh, then we have uh, lithium silicon graphite anodes. They are able to increase the energy density of the battery. The current one, the lithium graphite, just is the same energy density as what you have now in your, in your iPhone battery, but it comes at a much lower price and uh, without the trouble of potentially causing a fire. But then if I add silicon to it, the second type of anode, uh, I get much higher energy density, close to double what's available right now. And then the third anode we can match our sulfur technology to is that of just lithium metal. And, uh, and so we are, we are very flexible and able to partner with a range of different partners out there in the, uh, in, in, in the battery world. Cost savings, uh, um, yeah, we can go back. So cost savings are substantial because sulfur is very abundant and uh, is, uh, is, 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 is now a minor component of the cost of a battery, whereas the current cathode, the nickel manganese cobalt oxide, represents about 60% of the cost of a battery uh, with, the, with the sulfur that is, that is much, much less. So if you go uh, next slide, please. Uh, I talked about the differences in uh, energy density. So here is the breakdown of, uh, of, of what a battery costs in terms of its components. What you can see is that by far largest component currently in, the, in, the, in your iPhone battery is the cathode, uh, which is about $103 uh, per kilowatt hour. If you replace that with our sulfur, it, it drops down almost by a factor of 10. Then we have uh, added there different bits and pieces to indicate what it would look like if we have a high silicon anode, and that, that is the anode that gives then rise to about double the energy density to what is currently uh, in, in, in a lithium uh, ion battery. And uh, even at that stage, although we have now other elements which are a little bit more expensive, we still come in way below the cost of the current uh, batteries that are out there. So it's safer, it's cheaper, and it lasts twice as long. How good is that? Uh, sulfur itself is not a supply problem. Uh, it's the fifth most abundant element in the Earth's crust. And uh, even if we have a massive explosion in terms of production, uh, of uh, lithium sulfur batteries, uh, we will hardly scratch the surface of the supply. And there are, of course, suppliers which are really keen to enter into the green energy transition. And those suppliers are refineries that desulfurize, the, 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 um, uh, do, do, do a hydro desulfurization of, uh, of crude oils and uh, therefore produce a lot of high quality sulfur. And if they can use that sulfur to help uh, enhance uh, and accelerate the energy transition, that is a good match and a good win-win for everybody concerned. Uh, next slide. And uh, this is the puzzle piece that we've uh, seen already. And really the, the key of it is our bit, which is the polysulfide shuttling technology. And that is what was missing uh, in the patent portfolio that we acquired. But there's a lot of uh, IP around uh, our, our polysulfide shuttling technology that protects us uh, and it allows us to really apply it very well. And uh, so overall, it's a very synergistic acquisition of, uh, of, of, of those technologies. Uh, next slide. And I think I'll hand over to uh, John for some uh, closing remarks. Okay, so uh, in summary, writing, uh, writing the uh, delivering uh, success on the technology and the assets that China has. Well, any IP portfolio, 82 patent portfolios, uh, multi anode scope for, for our work. Next steps, uh, we're absolutely uh, serious about the way that we're going to uh, exploit, progress this work. So, we're embarking on uh, enhancement of our systems and approach of a, a total quality TRL approach. We uh, welcome the engagement from uh, uh, credential partners as we do that. We're ambitious. Uh, our, we would uh, we aim uh, to get a, a, a broad adoption, greater than seventy percent adoption of lithium sulfur uh, as uh, the cathodes for uh, lithium technologies globally. We aim to, uh, in an Australian term, in an Australian, 
uh, paddle really hard, get to the top of the wave uh, on battery high performance and then surf the front. Uh, and uh, we're uh, out there at the moment uh, actively seeking, seeking industry partners and government support uh, towards uh, strategic uh, funding to accelerate our work towards what we consider to be uh, the world's most uh, important or best battery uh, innovation. So thank you uh, today. Thank you for entrusting uh, your company and your investment uh, to, to us. Uh, I think we're progressing uh, very strongly and happy to take, uh, take questions at some point. That's fantastic. Thank you very much indeed for your presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, do please continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated in the top right hand corner of your screen. But just while the team take a few moments to review those questions, I'd like to remind you the recording of the presentation along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed from your invested dashboard. Um, as you can see, not that you've had a great amount of time to have a look at them, um, guys, but we have received a number of questions throughout today's uh, presentation. So. Thank you to everyone for submitting those. If I may just start with the first question, and um, I think I will probably combine two here together for you, Amit. Um, it reads as follows. How long is the cash runway expected to be? Have significant shareholders indicated they'll participate in any future fundraise? And just to sort of blend in with that, when does July expect to be cash positive? Uh, thank you, Paul. So I'll take the question. So our average cash burn a month is around 600,000 um, pounds. But you have... I think what I would like to ask the investors is to consider what we have achieved since the IPO. Um, getting the Asuna trial on foot, manufacturing those batteries, developing the BMS system wasn't part of the plan when we started the IPO program. So um, if you consider what has been achieved within the same budget that we had at the time of IPO, um, so it's a massive achievement from a business perspective. We also did the IP acquisition. I think what, what I want to flag there is uh, why that was so strategic for us. The estimated investment for that IP portfolio is around 100 million pounds. And that's and that also includes over 10 years of uh, hundreds of scientists working on that research program. So not, not just from a quantum perspective, but also why it was so strategic, why and how it accelerates our development program is something that you should consider. Uh, so cash and I think calculation can be done based on our average cash burn. Significant shareholders indication. I think we are not discussing any capital raise program at this point in time, but we have full support of our shareholders. We are doing our investor roadshows now and the investors that we have met, we have got their full support in terms of our strategy and what we're trying to achieve. So I'll, I'll kind of pause there. In, in terms of uh, cash positive, I think we just heard from John as to what our plans for the next 12 months are. We just acquired the IP portfolio, which has significantly changed. Our uh, changing our plans as to how we want to achieve. So we need some time to kind of work through what does it mean for us from a numbers perspective, from a milestones perspective, and we'll report back to you in the next three months or so. Fantastic. Thanks. Thank you. That, uh, uh, explicitly, we, we haven't spoken to any, any of our shareholders yet about raising capital yeah. uh, at all. Uh, we are, as I said, working hard now uh, that we have the IP portfolio uh, on our planning for how the, the, the link between our technology uh, and the market uh, and how we will uh, progress uh, progress that and which partners will work alongside. Yeah. So uh, we'll come back to uh, with this sort of phase that we're doing now, we'll, be, we'll come back and update our shareholders uh, on the, uh, the plan that we adopt. And if I can also add, right, like in terms of support from institutional shareholders, the best measure is if they continue to hold their shares that they came in at the time of IPO. So as far as I'm aware, none of the shareholders have sold any of the shares so far. Plus, some of our large institutions have continued to acquire some shares through the last uh, 12 and 18 months as well, which is kind of, from our perspective, that's a good solid support from them. Yeah, uh, I hear your share that your uh, CEO is acquiring shares. At the yeah, and, and, of and John, John has been acquiring shares progressively as well. And I should say, there was one question about directors when they can acquire shares or not. Uh, some of us are part of what's called the concert party, so myself included. So if I were to buy one extra share, I would have to launch a formal takeover bid. So the fact that I haven't bought is not at all a sign that I don't believe in the company. It's just I haven't got enough cash to take over. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Professor Meshma. Um, Right, the next question we've got here. After the 12-month research refinement period and subsequent validation of Endure towards lead 
acid applications. How confident are you that the industry will be willing to adopt the battery technology? And the second part, will the validation period of the battery be in concert with any industry players similar to what is occurring at the Asiana? Yeah, okay. uh, I'll take the question. So firstly, uh, research is research. So in research, you have risk, you have technical risk, you have competitive risk, you have market risk. On the assumption that we're able to achieve the research targets that we've got, we'll have a compelling proposition. That's the goal of doing the research. Now, uh, I did say that I have had a, a big, uh, a lot of experience in, uh, with the lead acid uh, ecosystem and the manufacturers of the lead acid ecosystem. There are other competitive technologies out there, uh, so the market is always developing. Uh, but uh, if we can get uh, our zinc bromide technology to achieve those extra uh, hurdles that we set for it, the ability to operate ad hoc uh, with strong control of dendrites, the ability to sit uh, top of charge uh, and have dendrite management and our uh, lower uh, cost and lower impedance uh, current collectors, all of which are, is our R&D program, then we'll position the technology as a really compelling proposition in those markets. So that makes me confident. Uh, but we will be doing the, we, we'll be doing the research towards those goals this year. That's great. Thank you, John. Um, next one we've got here is um, what market segment target are you looking at with its batteries which are produced in the lead acid battery for factory? So first first of all, I think we have a super compelling uh, proposition. Once we've got those research goals on any activity in the lead acid industry that needs a uh, high power discharge. And, and frankly, that's that's the bulk of the bulk of the industry uh, today. So the largest parts of those markets. So we actually see it you know, not in the face of the lead acid manufacturers, we, we want to work with the lead acid manufacturers and we want to work with the uh, lead acid ecosystem as an extension uh, for the markets that they service. Uh, and that will be the approach that we're taking when we get a market. That's great, thank you, John. Next question we've got here is, will it be possible for Jalan to build a mega battery for use in place of the presently favored lithium iron type at very large solar energy units, such as the one in South Australia? Uh, hell yeah. Uh, in fact, down that path, we're probably going to be taking the, the lithium sulfur. So the uh, using just the graphitic anode uh, on the path, combining our sulfur technology with just the graphitic anode, then what we do is we make a cell which would be very suitable for the application that you uh, describe. Uh, that will be a, a very low cost cell and a very safe cell. And, and that's what that particular part of the market uh, demands. But that market today is a lithium market. The majority of that market is a lithium, a lithium market. So we think that of our two technologies, for that particular use case, we'll target it with the lithium sulfur with the graffiti canoe. Fantastic. Thank you, John. Um, right. The next question we've got here is given that Tesla is the EV leader and moving towards their batteries being 4,680 cylinder format, can the um, listed technology be deployed in 4680 and will July focus on this format? That's a, that's a, a very direct and technical question. Uh, I can tell you that uh, I'm doing this call from London on my way to London. I came through Singapore. Uh, why is that relevant? When I was in Singapore, uh, I was talking with uh, influential people from the from the industry uh, in trying to understand the, the market trends. There's actually a bifurcation at the moment in the automotive electrical vehicle market. Uh, on one vector, uh, people are going towards uh, high performance, and that's where we're uh, going with our lithium silicon sulfur and our, uh, our lithium metal uh, and our sulfur technology. There's another vector, uh, and, and those two vectors, that. That first vector tends to be happening in North America. The second vector uh, is one towards low cost. Uh, and uh, that on that second vector, uh, that's where Asia is going. Um, so it, the, the most direct answer to your question is, yes, we can with time direct uh, at, the, at the specifically at the 4680. In the first instance, we'll be, we'll be targeting uh, a, a power chuck. Oh, I love this next question. 
<laughs> Fantastic. You, you've got there ahead of me, John. Thank you. Well, I'll read it out anyway. Um, um, why will you succeed whilst the company size of Johnson Matthews decided to quit? I don't think Johnson Matthews quit. Johnson Matthews uh, made a decision about where they wanted to focus. Johnson Matthews is an extraordinary uh, catalytic technology company. It's, it's a very successful company doing that, that work. And if you just look at their annual, annual report or their, their website, you'll see that what they're doubling down is, is in what they're, they're doing well. Their technology and the technology that combines with our own uh, is very important in the, in the battery and energy storage industry. So if I was Johnson Matthey uh, and I had that technology, then I'd be facing a really tough decision. Uh, do I want to go all in? on energy storage because you're going to have to go all in to compete with uh, the giants in energy storage, the, the LGs, the CATLs, uh, and, and, and so on. And it's a little bit outside of where Johnson Matthew is all in uh, at the moment. Um, and obviously they've decided to, to double down on, on, on the area that they're strong uh, today, which is a very sound business decision. So we're a little giant. How, do, how can we succeed? Well, obviously, as little giant and little nimble uh, giant, we have opportunity to enter the supply chain in different ways and with different objectives than what uh, Johnson Matthew might, the type of approach that Johnson Matthew uh, might try to, to follow. And we've got some pretty ambitious ideas at the moment about how we're going to pull that off and, and, and what we're going to do. So the strict answer is technically, technically, if you talk about just from a technology point of view, Johnson Maffey and the science team in Johnson Maffey did an incredible job. They 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 were at the forefront of the industry, right there. So there was never I don't think there's ever a question from the Johnson Maffey side that they were able to deliver the technology. They proved they could deliver the technology. Uh, I think it was just a commercial decision uh, by their leadership about whether that was the right commercial direction for them. So, so they certainly uh, had the capability to deliver technology and showed that. Um, now, as stewards of that technology uh, with our team, we believe we can continue that journey and, and deliver the technology. No question on that. that there, was, there was no technological reason that it couldn't, couldn't be sound. And we've got uh, all of those different levers that we can use as a small, nimble, te technology, uh, small, nimble company to actually commercialize it to great benefit uh, of SGOs. That's great. Thank you very much indeed. Um, next one we've got here. At the last update, the directors indicated there'd be a significant effort to raise awareness with investment institutions about Jalan's plans and technology to lift the share price. What's been done to raise awareness about Jalan and why has there been no significant movement in the share price? And is the company significantly undervalued? What's the team doing to address this? So a, a fair few questions in one there for you. Thank you, John. So, so first of all, we are doing a lot more to raise awareness about uh, July, and you are. We, I think you know, it's like snowball moving down a hill that you start to gather momentum. I hope, I hope that the uh, shareholders on the call have seen uh, there has been progression uh, in, in the information and the progress that we're uh, we're making. Uh, now, as I said earlier in this presentation, we've reached this milestone uh, in our company where we've got the technology and the and IP and all that sort of locked away. It is important for us, not just from the, the perspective of, of the share market, but it's also very important to us from the perspective of the commercial negotiations that we want to engage in, that the, that the profile of July continues to be lifted. So that remains a, a goal. We will continue to push on that because we want to be seen uh, and treated with respect in the industry uh, with where we, we, where we believe we stand in terms of the significance of this company and its team. Great. Thank you very much, John. Um, next we've got here is, will a July and battery ever uh, have a place in the multitude of homes with solar panels looking for energy storage at a reasonable price? How would it compare with a Tesla Powerwall with a new Enphase IQ5? Okay, so just to go back to the last question before I do that, um, from my own perspective, 
uh, I wasn't restricted by commerce and I saw this as an opportunity at this point in time. So moving on to the second uh, question here, uh, will we have a place in the multitude of homes with solar panels? Yes. Yes, we will. How will it compare the Tesla Powerwall or the new Enphase IQ5? Uh, they're uh, end use products that would use cells and I believe that Giant's path into products like that uh, is likely to be going to be by going in earlier in the supply chain, uh, and we would like to think that in the fullness of time, if we can uh, secure what we, the position that we're targeting for our lithium sulfur, that it will be adopted into many uh, different products around the world in those market segments. That's great. Thank you very much indeed. We've got a few questions now sort of moving on to zinc bromide. So the first one reads, what are some examples of application in the high discharge sector of the lead acid market that Geline zinc bromide solution will be relevant for? And what proportion of the overall lead acid market does high discharge constitute? A very large percentage of the lead acid market uh, and uh, it is services sectors like, for example, uh, the uh, critical power systems that back up uh, the internet or uh, telecom uh, telecom services. There's two aspects to think about here. Uh, our energy density is roughly the same as a lead acid battery within a world of fun. There's differences in gravimetric and volumetric energy density. But because we can use 100% of state of charge and because uh, we have this advantage uh, where we actually get more out uh, during a uh, a high uh, power discharge that means both that we can pack more energy into a smaller space and we can do it at a low cost so uh, think about those reserve power uh, applications the only thing i'll caveat caveat that with just to be reasonable is that there are other technologies that will also be trying to break in there like sodium iron as well so we not only have to benchmark ourselves against lead acid but we have to to be to be to gain real success for our shareholders we have to benchmark and, and seek to attain performance goals that benchmark against the new and introducing technologies as well that's where we'll be going but the speed of discharge is higher and fast than it will certainly higher. yeah it's a, it's a, it's a, <coughs> a great opportunity to uh to take to grow in those applications that's great. Thank you, Ben. Um, next one we've got here. With the zinc bromide battery, is the research to high C rating and reducing and dendrite speculative or an advanced stage of development? So uh, the, our zinc bromide cells today can handle high speed discharge. So uh, we, uh, if we do a high speed charge at the moment, we will uh, develop uh, or have an accelerate effect of developing dendrites. Uh, so, you know, people had thought in the past that this has been symmetric. When you're doing uh, things like uh, reserve power, the, the charge is actually slow because what you do in reserve power is uh, there's been a power failure, you, you dump uh, energy into the, foul, into the power failure uh, quickly while you start a generator. And then the generator runs and the, and the grid comes back on and you've got plenty of time to to charge afterwards so you don't have to force a, a high speed uh, charge into the technology i guess from a market perspective we hadn't in the past made that relationship that uh, the application could be asymmetric you can handle a fast discharge which we can do today and a slow a slow charge uh, the second part of the question, if it was pertaining to our work on uh, dendrite control, our dendrite control, the advanced dendrite control we want to do is a research uh, project. Uh, we're pretty excited because it can open up a whole lot of opportunity for July and if we pull off that research project. And, you know, we've got a great part of our team. We, we, we uh, have great uh, team members on the lithium sulfur side, but we also have great team members on our, our zinc bromide side. This is, these are, these are phenomenal uh, scientists uh, and we're very excited uh, by the challenge that we set ourselves on the research side. So we pull that off, it's going to be really important. Result. But the slow charge, fast discharge is not speculative, that's proven. That's proven, we do that one uh, today. 
Thank you very much. I think we've got time for, for one more question. I have just gone uh, over the hour. Um, is there a risk that you think bromide does not have a market advantage if this is successful? I don't think that's going to be a real problem for John. I mean, to be fair, I, I'm, I'm, I anticipate we can get there with both technologies. But if we if we make one, either of our technology, the leader uh, in, the, in, in the ecosystem, you know, if we achieve our goals, uh, it's going to be a great outcome. Uh, for our shareholders. But there's always the advantage of the zinc bromide system in terms of temperature. Uh, so zinc bromide will always have a very large temperature window uh, and will be very robust in terms of um, in terms of you know, operating down to zero state of charge. Um, they, that is inherently not possible for lithium-based technologies, which have to be managed more carefully in terms of the discharging profiles and the environmental uh, considerations in terms of heat. Um, so, therefore, those advantages in terms of zinc bromide stay and they're pretty unique to zinc bromide. So, so the cannibalization of one with the other is not really uh, going to happen. So, there's, there's a lot to be done, a lot, being, a lot being done. There's always risk in everything you do, but uh, you've got a great team out here uh, doing their best for the, for the shareholders. Thank That's you. That's fantastic. I think you have covered off of those questions. You can, of course, any uh, further questions that come through, the team will review all questions and we'll publish responses um, where appropriate to do so on the Investor Meet Company platform. John, I know you did have a, a quick conclusion, but any final just words before we redirect the attendees to give you some feedback, which I know you'll uh, greatly appreciate? No, I'm just grateful to everybody out there for your support uh, of your line. Uh, I know there's probably some of our team on the line if they are. Thanks for all the, all the work that uh, every, all the hard work everybody's putting into uh making it happen um you're in a you're on a great ship here yeah uh, in july it's risking everything but wow uh the, pro the prospects uh if we pull off uh, the ambitious plan that we've got uh is uh is phenomenal so thank you Thank you. That's fantastic. Thank you all for updating investors today. Can I please ask investors not to close the session? You should be automatically redirected to provide your feedback. And all the team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete, and I know it's greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of July and PLC, I'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That concludes today's session, and good morning to you all.